All right then, so before we begin, I just want to point out that I've added three more books into this book array right here. So we have The Hero of Ages, Cult of Magic, and The Light Fantastic, IDs of 456, and author IDs of 233. So this one's Brandon Sanderson down here, and these two are Terry Pratchett. All right, so we have at the minute a kind of one-way relationship going on. When we request a book, we can say we also want the author of that book. And then in this resolve function, we're going out and finding that author. So we're associating an author with a book. But at the minute, if we try to make a request that looks a bit like this, we're saying that we want an author for the root query, and then we want the books of that author, we can't currently do it. And Graphicos throwing a wobbler right here, saying it cannot query field books on type author. So that's because we've not yet set this stuff up. So what we really want to do is allow for that because every author is going to have a list of books, presumably. So when we query an author, we want to return these books. And to do that, we're going to have to register this books field right here. So much like we did down here, we'll say books and then specify the type of this. Now, what type is this going to be? Well, you might be thinking it's just book type, but not really, because remember, each author has potentially a whole list of books, not just one book. And this right here implies that it's just a single book. What we really want to do is tell GraphQL that it's going to be a list of book types. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need to grab something else from this GraphQL package up here. So let's do a comma and we want to grab the GraphQL list like so. So let's now copy that dude because we're going to use it down here. So inside author type where we see the books, it's going to be not type book type, but a new GraphQL list and inside book type because it's going to be a GraphQL list of book types. All right. So that's the type sorted. Next up, we have the resolve function again. We're taking the parent and the args. So remember the resolve function is there for us to go out and grab the data we need. So at this point in time, when we've made this request, we're initially making the query for the author, right? So we have that data on this parent object, remember? So we can use that parent to say, okay, well, I know now the ID of this author is one. So I'm going to look through the books array and find every book with an author ID of one, and I'm going to return that to you. So down here, the way we do that is by saying, first of all, return, and then we're going to use underscore again, dot, and this time use a method called filter. And what filter is going to do is filter through a particular array, in our case, the books array, because that's what we're searching for. And it's going to look for objects inside that books array, which match up to this criteria right here. Now, the criteria is going to be that the author ID property is equal to the parent ID. Remember, the parent is the initial author we've just requested. So, for example, this could be for ID 2. So we're taking that ID right here and we're looking in the books array for any book which has an author ID equal to two. So it'll look up here and say, OK, well, this one's got an author ID of two and this one. So those two can remain inside the array. Everything else I'm going to filter out of the array. OK, so eventually we're just returning the array with these two objects inside, which is what we want, a list of the books by that particular author. So now we've done that. Let's save it and give this a whirl. I'm going to go to the front end and open that up. Oops. And if we try to make this request now, in fact, first of all, I'm just going to refresh the page and we can see that squiggly line has gone because now GraphQL recognizes that we can nest this books query inside the author. So I'm going to press play and we can see we get back Brandon Sanderson and we also get the books associated with that author. And likewise, we don't need to request the name and the genre could just be the name. Press play. And now we get an array of books with just the name property. Awesome, right? So let's try this with a different ID, number one. And we just get the one book because there's only one book by Patrick Rothfuss in that array. Let's change this to three. And now we get three books. Awesome. So now we have this kind of two-way relationship going on. We've said that each author could have a list of books and each book has a particular author, right? Now, there's one more thing I want to show you before we end this tutorial, and that is this thing right here, because previously I said that we have to wrap the fields property inside a function. 
So what is the reason behind that? Well, first of all, let's just delete that function so that the fields property is just an object like so. And we'll do it down here as well. And then we'll run this and see what happens. So if I try to now open up this thing and request, then it's gonna spin for a little bit. Eventually, it will give us an error. Type error, fail to fetch. And if I try to refresh the whole screen over here, then it's gonna error out as well. So obviously, something is going wrong. And it says right here that book type is not defined. So if we go to the code and have a look, obviously the code runs from top to bottom, right? So it comes to author type right here and it sees this book type and it's saying, okay, well, I don't really know what this is because it's not been defined yet. We're defining it down here. So that's why we're getting an error. So you might be thinking, well, okay, why don't we just define book type above, uh, above author? So if we take that stuff and paste it right up here, then save it and see what happens now. If we try to refresh, still not gonna work. And if we look in the console, this time we get a different error, author type is not defined. So right here, we're running through the code, top to bottom, it comes across this author type and it's saying, well, now I don't know what author type is because author type is not defined until down here. So it's kind of like catch 22, Changing the order of these things is not going to solve the problem, which is why we wrap these things inside a function like so. Because if we wrap the fields inside a function, then what we're doing is still running the code from top to bottom, but we're not actually executing this function until some point after the whole of the file has run. Okay, so by the time we do execute the code inside the function, it knows what author type is because this has already been run previously. All right, and vice versa. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense as to why we wrap these fields inside a function.